Oh, right. Now, 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 oh, okay. Now, now we're on. Okay. Now, Emily's going to lead us to the discussion on, uh, on uh, health care in general. But um, since uh, January, since the Affordable Care Act went into place, and I, I guess they only have stats up probably up until the end of May at this point, the uh, percentage of Americans that do not have a health care plan has gone from 17% to 13% in five months. It's the I, lowest I encourage, it's ever I, been I encourage since everybody to look that up. Records. I encourage everybody to look that up, and the audience also looked that up. It's gone from seventeen percent to thirteen percent. So this, the narrative about oh, everybody or some people are going to lose their health care, I think, is probably not accurate. Read up on it. If you find something different than that, give me a call. Let me know, Emily. Your show. Well, I just had one more question about what we were talking about earlier. I apologize, but um. You said as a representative, you have an issue that comes to you, people, individuals, businesses, email you. Now, have you ever had to vote against how you felt personally about an issue in order to please your the people you represent? That's I mean, good... like, like let's say for the gun control, right? If the people want no guns and you want to vote another way personally as an individual, I mean, do yeah. you vote to please against it, well, what I, you believe in? I, I don't think I... Um... I think there were times where I felt I felt conflicted because I wanted to get it right for my district. Okay. And I wanted to put my kind of where I was aside a little bit because I did want to hear whatever he had to say. Yeah. Um, death penalty was a good example of that one mm. because it was really uh, there was a lot of outcry of support on both sides mm -hmm. of, of e either side. Yeah. Right. Um, I would say personally, um, I would have been pro pro death penalty at the time. Um, at this, but when it, when it finally came down, that's, that is how I voted, right. but it was on behalf of the district. Because there for a while, I felt very conflicted at watching the debate come out. And that was one of those I kind of decided, well, whatever I feel like the district is, that's what I'm going to do on that one. So I think it's what people in the district would want me to do. And that's another one that took a, very, a very emotional tack because of the, the murders up in um, upstate. In Cheshire. In Cheshire. Too. That's yeah. that's where a lot oh, of the um, right a lot of the the energy right. energy yeah. for the death penalty came out of because you know people wanted you know they they didn't want that to happen again. Unfortunately the death penalty doesn't discourage murder. Um, mm -hmm. but but you know <clears throat> they wanted to do they wanted something to yeah. happen. There were there were people who came out I would say for and against it for many different reasons. I mean, the fours are people who believe in the sense of justice that mm -hmm. you know by doing that there's yep. a sense of justice, whether it's in their them or they feel like it's better for society. Mm -hmm. There are some people who say it was more practical because of the costs involved. Because it's you know one of the things that I think is true is keeping somebody on death row in Connecticut is exorbitantly expensive, but they've designed it to be exorbitantly expensive yeah. for the political battle. Yeah. So it's 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 kind of hard to say where the cost would actually fall out. Some some people look at it and say, well, I don't think we should keep these people around. What percentage so, of our of our prisons in Connecticut? I don't know if you have the answer to this. Yeah. But what percentage of our prisons in Connecticut are are, are corporate entities now? Because I know that um, a lot of them have gone. A lot of a lot of public. Yeah, I don't think incarceration anymore. has gone to the private sector, and the unfortunate yeah. side of that is that. Um, there's a profit in keeping people yeah. in prison longer and having more people in prison. It, it, to, my, to my knowledge, nothing really is privatized in the system there, but I can find out for you for sure. Okay. All, ours, all ours are still state, as far as I know, because one of the things we tried to do was privatize the kitchen services. Because mm -hmm. we knew if we did that part of it, we had an opportunity to have some major savings. Um, whenever That never happened, but that is one, thing, one reason we tried to do that. Mm -hmm. But I believe they're all still under the state control, except okay. the federal one we have, of course. And what about people yeah. who they find on death yeah. row that are wrongly they find you know exonerated that, that, after twenty years? That is know? one of the that is one of the biggest arguments you get in right. the death penalty yeah. case. I mean, there's I think there was a sense that a lot of people who were pro death penalty felt at this point that we have so many things to prove somebody guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, meaning the uh, DNA evidence and right. those other things. But yeah, that's still that's one of the big arguments people use against having the death penalty yeah. is what happens if you find out later somebody could be exonerated. And sometimes we do find and, that. History, it's, it's happened. happened. Right. It has it happened. Continu right. It continues to happen, yeah. even with DNA. Sometimes DNA yeah. is wrong. That's an inexact, um, inexact yeah. process. I mean, the, the question: would, it, would a case hinge wholly on DNA, and should that be yeah. a death penalty case? I mean, I'll leave that up to the judges to decide how they're going to do that one. Yeah. Right. 
But th those are those are just examples of where some of these things come through, and you look at them. And there are many. I, I say ninety percent or more of the bills that we vote on. It's not that I have a personal stake in any of it. Mm -hmm. It's really more you look at it and you try to make the you know, you know the best case long term for the policy. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, if I had, I think, 309 bills come through this past session, in a short session, and, um, you know, I, look, I looked at, you know, so many different things, and you really have to read them and find out what's in them. And the other problem is the system is kind of a pain because you could change those bills mm -hmm. through the process, which is really horrible because what they'll do is they'll put a bill in and they'll make it a shell for something they know they're going to use later. Mm -hmm. So you better be paying attention to see if there's an amendment or something comes in that changes that bill. Do you find a lot of amendments yeah. in bills? Does the bills end up with a lot of amendments oh, yeah. attached? Yeah. Well, not, not as in numbers per bill, but a lot of bills have amendments because that's part of the process. You know, when, when the bill comes up in the very beginning, goes co to committee, many times it passes committee as a work in progress. And by the time it actually makes it to the floor of the legislature, it could be gutted and have an entirely different bill put in it. So it's really incumbent on people to kind of pay attention to what's yeah. important. And it's really important for legislators to watch it because that's how what we, you know, some people call the rats get in bills. Because at the last minute, a bill is changed, there's an amendment, and then towards the end of session, somebody jams it in on what they call a consent calendar. So it comes through with very little opposition, and next thing you know, you look at it and go, whoa. Yeah. Right. Or, or you have big bills, like big budgets and aircraft carrier right. bills where they put as much in it. Yeah. Because it becomes, it becomes very difficult for somebody to vote against it. Because then somebody will say, you voted against that when that's only a small part of right. that. Yeah. Right. Like there, there's one, one part of the bill that says, you know, you're going to eat dogs, and the other says, it's hearing aids for kids. Well, <laughs> you know, you look, at, you look at these bills, and it can have all kinds of different pieces and parts to them. So it can be a little nebulous sometimes, but that's did, where you got to pay attention. Did you have a vote on yeah. on on, um, on well, two things: um, hydro fracturing, and I'll call mm -hmm. it that because it's because that's that's the polite way of saying fracking because fracking yeah. has right. obviously become a very dirty word, probably with a good with with good reason. But um, the transportation of hydro fractured water through Connecticut, right, and the treatment of hydro fractured water. In Connecticut, do either of those come as, to a vote? Um, as I recall, the treatment of water mm -hmm. in Connecticut came to a vote. I voted against that. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it just it, again common sense. Mm -hmm. If 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 there's a question with bromides in the water, yeah. why do I want to bring it into our water systems in right. Connecticut when right. I know there's a legitimate concern there? That's just absolutely crazy to me. So I think from looking at my standpoint, where I'm in Connecticut, I voted against that because I think environmentally okay. unsound. The other one was transporting it through. I don't think that ever made it to a vote. I'd have to go back and look, to be honest. Okay, I'd have to go back and look. You know, Dan, you mentioned privatization. A term I hear mentioned very often on Fox News. I watch Fox News constantly. And the reason why is so that I know what I'm talking about. And all I hear is about the privatization. I'm saying to myself, what is it with this? It seems that on Fox, the only time the government, the, the only time the government is any good is when you need a friend. The government's your enemy until you need a friend. And like the Koch brothers, you know? They hate the government. Why? Because the government enforces restrictions. The government controls the EPA. The EPA tells the Koch brothers, hey, you guys can't do this anymore. So what does the Koch brothers do? They say, well, let's buy some politicians, primarily Republicans, so that we can get them to vote exactly the way we want, so we can buy the country. Well, that's on a national level. I think it's, okay. as we talked about in the first episode, the fact that uh, our legislators, our, our yeah. uh, House, House and Senate within Connecticut, they have, we have public campaign financing, and, and beyond that, people cannot give money to them. And that's part, that's the good side of, of giving them the money from, from the public financing is that they, they're not allowed to get money from anywhere else, from any corporate PACs, any no, lobbying PACs. Why do you PACs? want to privatize all these, all these different institutions that seem to be working pretty well? Because there are a lot of, I'm, I'm not, listen, I don't think privatization is the answer for everything. I don't. Okay. But there are a lot of institutions that aren't working that well. Mm -hmm. and, and I think the philosophy by a lot of Republicans is that 
by getting the, these bureaucracies out of the way. Because the problem, the problem with government agencies, in a government agency, it's not like you guys are motivated to do anything special that day. I mean, they're good people. They're good. Don't get me wrong. But the bureaucracy that's formed because it is a government agency is sometimes ridiculous. And what happens is you have way too many people making political decisions on practical matters. Now, I'm not saying we need to privatize everything. I say there's a balance. See, on one hand, you have people who are... Fair and balanced? On one hand... No. You'd need to watch more than Fox News, dude, because I don't even watch that much Fox News. But on one hand, I mean, listen, this is the way I see the world. I mean, I think people who are very, very liberal have a tendency um, not to really believe in these companies and their fellow man, and they'd rather have a fair system that gives, you know, fairness... More to them and less to everybody else. or, Or, no, I think people who just want fairness... No, that's not no, not, no, not being that's fair. My, that's that's not being fair. But I, I think on the conservative side, I think a lot of people um, feel like having an entity isn't fair. That if they work, have you know, more power in their individual neighbors, that somehow all ships will rise on the tide and they'll be better off for it. I'm going to throw in a clarifying here because I want because I want to make this this a very important point because I don't think it's Republican and Democrat. I don't think it's liberal and conservative because you could be conservative mm-hmm. on. Fiscal matters and not and liberal on social issues. You yes. Be, likewise, you, it's it's all, there's yeah. a whole diff- but there's a spectrum. Two whole different things, though. Sure. Social matters and uh, and and economic matters. And there are a lot of Democrats that are that I would call corporate Democrats. So it's to me, wow. it's a matter of people being either entrenched into the corporate mode, you know, letting companies and encouraging companies to do. To have more freedom, yeah. let's say, Listen, to do what they want to do. There are plenty of corporations given to Dems, and there's plenty of corporations given to Republicans. Yeah, people. Yeah, they, they like to they like yeah. to throw the money around in, in everybody's direction to cover the best. So yeah. that, that, that no matter Social who wins, they end up broke. Yeah. Is it going broke? Um, probably not. I don't think we'll ever let it go broke. You don't but watch I enough think, Fox News. <laughs> I think. Listen, I th- I'm not saying it wasn't mismanaged. I don't think Social Security should be something that the government or a political entity can dip their funds in and use those funds for anything. I think you should have more of a lockbox concept there instead of trying to leverage it. Um, I think we'd be better off with a lot of our pensions if we funded them properly. Nothing wrong with a pension. Yep. Nothing wrong with a pension as long as it's funded properly and you, you do it honestly. What's your take so, on unions? Well, it depends. You know, I'll be honest. Um, I think in some instances, some unions have way too much power. No question about it. I don't think any but, have any power anymore. Uh, Connecticut, I think they do. I think not, that, much, not uh, really much. From from where I sit, yeah. <laughs> the unions have a lot of power. What about but, the minimum but, wage? But let me back up here if you want to talk about unions. Um, let's, go, let's, let's stay on unions for a bit. Yeah, I mean, unions are important. Listen, I understand where there needs to be this ability for people to work together to come for a common good. I get that. Mm-hmm. Um, I do believe that in some of the cases, the unions it goes way too far, and that you know in in a shrinking economy, we've protected large sections of our unions in the state, and it's made us worse. They didn't they didn't have as much uh, loss, I say, as their, their neighbor down the street was non-union. But I'm not saying yeah. we should get rid of all unions. If, if people are working longer, let's say yeah. the union employees, let's say state employees, if they're living longer and, and presumably going to be collecting a pension longer, should they have to work longer? The same way that they've increased the age for Social Security. That that keeps going up as the as people live longer. Okay. And a lot of things you can't have people do. retiring at sixty five and living another thirty years. But you you can't have somebody t- retiring at fifty five and doing that right. and taking the the best highest of their last three mm-hmm. years of overtime. Yeah, mm-hmm. like listen, there has to be some common sense right. in there yeah. Yeah. because it used to be something that you know in many cases in a public life you'd be promised a really really great retirement, yeah. right. but you might have wages a little bit lower than everybody else. That's the way it used it's to be. It's all changed now. Yeah. It's all topsy turvy. That so, has changed somewhat. So yeah. as a market in our economy, we've got to do something to fix that. Mm-hmm. Um, um, you know, I particularly like trade unions. Yeah. See, trade unions provide a service to people to where they're making their members better products. Mm-hmm. So you can talk to a guy like Mark Bouton in Danbury. Mm-hmm. You know, Mark Bouton t- told me one time, I hope I'm not speaking out of turn, Mark. He says, you know, I'd rather buy a union building because I know that a lot of these specs are going to be met because of the quality of the workforce. Mm-hmm. So in that case, that's where those unions provide a tremendous service for our economy. So like, you know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about balance. And there is a time to raise the minimum wage. This is not the first time there's something good has <laughs> been said about, about Mark Dowden on Progressive. <laughs> what do you think about just want you to know that Mark about corporate uh, welfare. And I agree. The uh, fact that that's a good the question. fact that these poor yeah. that, that and, and and I love and I love the way the the Republicans and Fox always put it. <laughs> but it's but you it's know cor- again I'm going to qualify that corporate people because that's the difference. Well, okay. That's but, the dividing right, line. But, all right, so the corporate people, but why they pay their people so little? 
that we have to supply them with housing. Mm. We have to supply them Which, with food stamps. The guys that work down at Walmart, the guys that are making yeah. seven bucks an hour, that don't have a pot to piss in, that have to work two 40-hour jobs just so they can get by, and you guys just don't sit around. You know, I would. the first thing I would do if I were you, I'd start screaming for a living wage. Where you can treat people you with do, respect. You know the expression living wage yeah. versus, versus yeah. minimum you know, wage. With, with, with respect and with mm-hmm. dignity. Instead of treating these people. And you, you, ever, you ever go to a Walmart? You ought to walk into a Walmart once if you want an awakening. Go in there and look at America. And it's sad. And I tell you, and, and the, the, the fact that they drive the prices down so low. Hey, I don't need to pay 79 cents for a t shirt. I'll pay three dollars. Pay the kid behind the register a living wage. Look what they do in Costco. Okay, I got, your, I got your point. Costco's Costco's a good, point. That's a good comparison. I, I'll let you address yeah. that. Costco versus Walmart. Well, I mean, listen. I think I think number one, um, these these folks do pay more than seven dollars an hour because minimum wage Connecticut's higher than that. Yeah. Seven and a quarter. And, and, and wow. I, well, it, 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 it was already sliced or set to go up yeah. over the next few years. So we, we've looked at minimum wage, and minimum wage is going up now. The concept yeah, of the, Coke the concept. Get rid of I don't it. care about the Coke. Coke Brothers. Yeah. You I don't should. care about the Coke you Brothers. Should. You know, they're it's like party. They're no, listen, your I care. Party. I care about. We locked them I care out. They're about not, they're not upset. I care about common sense in this state, where this state is last in all the things that should be first in, and yeah. first in all the things that we should we probably last in? in. Listen, my point is in this state, our economy stinks. And there are times to raise the minimum wage and times not to. Now, as far as a living wage, listen, someone has to start somewhere. I understand that argument. Right. Taco Bell and McDonald's and all it should not be a living wage. I worked at Taco Bell in college. I made a decent little amount of money when yeah, I was... Let, do you know let, you let me finish. Wait, I okay. gave you time. Okay. I gave you time. I do not think everything needs to be a living wage. I think there needs to be a way to get people... Up and out of those jobs. Right. Make them move through those I jobs. Agree. Inspire people. Mm-hmm. In this state, we don't do anything like that because we do give out way too many food stamps and mm-hmm. welfare. I think unemployment should be a declining scale so people start to feel the pain before they just ends on them. Mm-hmm. And I also think corporate welfare is, is crap. We don't need to be doing corporate welfare. Like Jackson Laboratories. You know, the sweetheart deal we gave to bring them in here. Mm-hmm. I realize we should do things to bring people in, but they should be like, you know, maybe maybe some tax credits or things that are available to everybody. Right. Not, not not you just give them a handout of three hundred million dollars. So, listen, we we got a system that's broke. Yeah. Oh, it's terribly. We haven't, but and and you know what? It's going to take us coming together and not worrying about George Soros or the Koch brothers to fix mm-hmm. it. George Soros, well, who's he? I did. Uh, I mentioned him. Who's he? But, um, <laughs> what but does he do? But there's always going to be, but there's yeah. always going to be people working at Walmart and at McDonald's yes. and Burger King and those places. And those people, a lot of them, then it, those aren't just college kids. Those yeah. aren't just high school kids. Those are people that count on that for their primary. That's yeah. their, right. that's their job. Let right. me ask you this. And, they're, right. Right. and they're working forty or fifty <laughs> hours a week. <laughs> and, and the and the religious, nice. the moral question is: oh, if someone's yeah. working a full time job, if you've got a household with two adults working full time yeah. jobs, should they be making enough money to pay for rum? For food on the table, yeah. to live, for a yeah. decent yeah. Place, to live. Yeah. place to live, yeah. should Listen. should they be guaranteed that, what, what, or should or should government have to provide? What, that? That, that, there's 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 the question, right? Or is everybody guaranteed that? Right. No, I think yeah. if you work You're a full time job, you should. I think if you work a full time job, yeah. yeah, you should work to better yourself and mm-hmm. get out of that and move up. But there will always that's there are plenty. Listen, there will always in this be state, people there will always be people who places. stay. But, but at the same time, if we don't do anything to inspire them right. to earn more or give them opportunities, yeah. you know, that's why we do educational opportunities. Listen, you want to make this state a better place to live where they can afford it? Let's get rid of the freaking gas tax, mm. an extra 25 cents a gallon that gets swept in the general fund that just, you know, $100 million a year just goes out for whatever politics of right. du jour is. Right, right. You know, make this place a less expensive place to live. That's how you fix it. Now, we took out that time. It used to be um, in Connecticut, we had, I think, a, a threshold of $75 for a clothing item right. that, was un- that was not taxed. So, so presumably, only people that are buying more expensive clothing items are paying tax, and people that are buying less well, expensive. Well, the, the, governor, the governor originally got rid of that yeah, I know we all tax got, I, break, I, I, and we I, eventually got it back. Uh, yeah, you know, but it's, it was it's at a lower level, though. It's $50. Yeah, yeah, let me ask you this. Yeah. You seem to be under the impression 
that people at they McDonald's. Don't. don't yep. Careful how you qualify things because you don't want to okay. be. Well, no, 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 I don't want to be the audience to feel like you're a bully. You seem to be under the impression that they're younger. Do you know what the average average age? The and and uh, the type of person that works at McDonald's average I, average. I would I would here you want to talk statistics. I would be worried about what that average is because I think it's probably a baloney number because I know a lot of senior citizens who go back and start working at McDonald's, including right. my aunt. My aunt, after she retired, she wanted something to do. She went and worked at McDonald's. It was a great job for her. Do you know what the average number is? The, the average number's got to be in the early twenties. The average number is twenty eight. And Check it out, average, folks. And the average <laughs> person at work okay. at McDonald's correct. and What's that the average mean? worker mean? is a white woman. That's no, median, not mean. I is it medium looking for? Or is it mean? I yeah. guess I say, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Means the so, average. Can we, can we so are, we're not we are talking about, we're not talking about just kids just median and mean. that are getting out of high school that are flipping, What's but we're what? talking about people that are, that are working. Yes. And let me tell you something. I don't know if you go into McDonald's or not. Dude, give me you take a okay. look at me. All right. But you know what it would like to be deal with the Amer- with, to deal with the American public for eight hours, for two hours. Never I've mind. done it. You I've get been these there. boneheads coming in. Right. I've done it. Yeah. So I mean, and these people, they should be getting bonus pay. I've done it. But you know, I, you know what? If if they're smart, they get at McDonald's, get a job. Oh, hold tables. on, Emily's got a question or a comment. No, I'm just saying that I worked at Massage Envy, which is another one of these corporate. Uh, anyway, we we were cha- paid fifteen dollars per massage, and you can't do forty hours of massage; it's physically impossible. So you can only really work twenty hours, mm-hmm. you're, and then we're paid fifteen dollars a massage, which is more than minimum wage. But it's it's still we didn't yeah. really get benefits. I mean, so even though we have like a full time job, we're still paid really badly. They don't offer benefits. All the money's going living to the wage. top. Yeah, is massage really is went under, right? Oh, well, or is it going under? Uh, I mean, listen, it's, that to me sounds like a flawed business model, right? Yeah, because any, anybody else out there in the massage world right. can go pay, you could basically charge a minimum of eighty five dollars, right? And you can bring yeah. a table to somebody's house if you had to, right? Right. And you could go out there and do yeah. you know a few massages a day, and quality wise, and by the way, you're going to get to do a few, yeah, yeah so but a couple, maybe yeah. maybe three. I mean, then right. you, you just yeah. hit the nail on the head. We have. To change the business model in this country. Right. When a business gets set up, the first thing, the most important thing in that business is the people that are working there. Right. Make sure that they're taken care of. Mm-hmm. Make sure that okay. they want to come into it. Make it a place where they want to work. If, if, if I agree with you, uh-huh. you, you have to understand. Yes, it is important to take care of those employees. Otherwise, they're going to leave. Mm. Yes. And we want, we want businesses to be able to do well and succeed. The most important way to take care of those people is to allow businesses to succeed. Yeah. Stop screwing with them. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Stop getting... Listen... A lot of the stuff we're doing on auspice of saying, let's let's give them this and make them take care of the people. A lot of these things make it very difficult for those businesses to get started and grow to a point where they can do it. Right. Like right now, I'm working for a small entrepreneurial business. I'm not getting paid hardly squat. Mm-hmm. It's a horrible thing. But I'm doing it with the, the idea that this is going to grow into something. And, that, and that's and, the way it works. And that's right. the way it works. But the, the more that I put on these guys, so as a legislator, the harder it is them for them to succeed. And that's where we are. We're, there's no balance in those kinds of decisions we're right. making. Mm-hmm. And that's why I really try hard to keep my head about me and listen to what both sides, because both sides have good ideas. We, I will tell you, we all agree on the same thing we want. At the end of the day, we know what we all want. It's pretty much the same thing. We want all those people to be successful, right. to be earning good livings, mm-hmm. to be able to, to yeah. make it. I'd like them to be able to make it work at a McDonald's or somewhere, but I know that they're probably going to have to move up to something else, like wait and take. But a lot of people don't. Right. A lot of people don't, but because why not? So there's our, there's our question. Because there's always a need for people to work at McDonald's. And yeah, but right. but there's always a pipeline of people somewhere. coming through. But don't use it as an excuse right? for not I'm not. I'm not, I'm, I'm not because they're going to... No, they're gonna, no, what you're doing is... You're, McDonald's is exploiting their people. They're taking advantage of them. Why? Because there's so few jobs out there. Have you looked at the cost of buying a frickin' McDonald's hamburger lately? Yeah, and, and have you looked at the amount it's, of profit that McDonald's made lately? They made $5 billion dollars yeah. in profit. You can't pay a these, kid a buck what an I'm, hour what I'm saying is more. These kids need to leave 
McDonald's. You go Where out. Where are they gonna you go? go to, you go to Portofino's in Bethel. Right. And yeah. you go out there and you get a job, and if you've got half a brain and a smile on your face, nice. you can go out there and kick butt making tips, especially in Connecticut. Right. In yeah. Connecticut, you can make good tips waiting tables. That still that still doesn't that I'm still saying, doesn't you, absolve you, McDonald's yeah. or here's, 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 Walmarts so, of their response. Their social here's responsibility. Here's a simple. Ah, social here's responsibility. Okay. Here's, oh, a yeah. here's a simple tweak. Here's a simple tweak on on that idea. Don't go to McDonald's. Mm. Eat at a place that's local. Uh, like Portofino's. Portofino's. <laughs> there are plenty of places that are that are Portofino's inexpensive. Back. <laughs> I did that. that are inexpensive. Maybe not as inexpensive, but the, the quality of food's better, yeah. and the money stays local. McDonald's. A lot of the profits go right. yeah. somewhere else. I, know. And I should not be in a McDonald's. I'm oh, trying to lose no. And then you nobody have to should. Vote. And, then you said you were and nobody like should late. shop at Walmart to save a buck because because you're cutting the throat of American right. workers. Mm. Shop local. But Are we done? No, but you you were saying that about the legislature, you were mm-hmm. changing laws, you know, for massage therapists and businesses that didn't use the words massage. Right. We, well, we we, we oh. identified that there was a problem with um, right. places who were advertising being massage. Right. Some of them questionable. Some of them not. Right. Anyway, by taking the law and saying, well, you can't put massage in the name unless you're a licensed massage therapist, right. it was a good consumer protection bill. Right. That's what we did. That's a good clarification for the clarification. consumer. Absolutely. Right. So yeah. A lot of these massage entities are not run by massage therapists. They're run by business people. So. Yeah. You know. Now, do they have people working there that aren't licensed massage therapists? Well, no, you have to be licensed, but they're not owned by licensed okay. massage therapists. Run, you know, so that's just yeah. interesting. Maybe you know, in the headquarters, yeah. you know, <laughs> but but that's interesting. No, I'd heard about that. The changes yeah. in the law. Yeah, once in a while we do some good stuff up there. We're yeah, <laughs> no, we that's try. Good. That's and good. Rich, I appreciate it. I thought massage good ther- therapists could get arrested. <laughs> they, yeah, if they're not legal. Yes, if they're not legal. Yes. You know, they're uh, not licensed. Yeah. Dan, I appreciate it because it's oh. it I, I, very rare I get a chance to talk to, to a Republican. Bring on your show. Yeah. Good Bring idea. on your show. He's just a guy. All right. So. And, with that, and with that, we're going to have to Are say uh, very oh. well from oh. uh, Progressive right. Soup, David Stevenson, okay. Emily Volpatesta, okay. co-hosts, Dan, Dan Carter, Carter, and Rich Frascone, who have, who have generously hogged the conversation, and that's quite all right. right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being on our show. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. But, um, passion. Where do you get my Yep.